Welcome back to Jetworks. I'm Craig and today I'm going to talk to you about painting models. This video is really to be looked at after you've seen the video I did on finishing, which is all about preparing the surfaces for painting. Today I'm going to look at some of the different types of painting and uh, equipment that you can use on your model. Um, on this side I've got aerosols um, and there are different types of um, spray paint that you can get. Um, this is says acrylic spray paint. This is from Hobbycraft, my local hobby store, uh, which has got a nitrocellulose lacquer. So it'll be interesting to see how this impacts on death bond. Here, here's another brand. This is Plastic Coat, which is a huge international company. Um, I've heard mixed reports of this stuff. It's because it contains uh, solvents. It contains, I mean, it says it's acrylic. I believe it's acrylic. Um, but uh, it does have a whole load of chemicals in there. So we'll give it a try and see what, what the sort of finish this comes out. Uh, we're just gonna try on a scrap bit of depth on. Uh, if it works for me, then uh, it saves you, the, saves you having to go out and buy some of this stuff. Um, RC Styro brand. This is a, a UK, I believe, brand. Uh, it works really nicely on foam. Uh, it's, it's, they're a little bit expensive. Um, but for silver, uh, it's particularly good, um, and it's got a good coverage. Um, I haven't tried these. There's another brand, Hobby Acrylic, so we'll give those a whirl and see what they're like. Um, looking at two brands, Revel, whoop, Revel and Tamiya. Uh, these are these are typically used for plastic model kits, but I'm going to look at. The impact of these on Defcon. And here we're talking about mixing our own paint. So we've got um, different types of off-the-shelf artist acrylic. So we've got uh, you've got sort of professional brands. So it's sort of for the real high-end artists, and the cheap stuff, which is for um, for kids, um, and um, a variety of different brands to try. And uh, we'll see what it uh, we'll see what it does. Then we have airbrushes. I've got uh, a variety of different airbrushes. We've got the ones which are, which operate on, on simply on, on uh, these you know, canisters, um, which are cheap and cheerful. Uh, they give a good finish. And then the artistic um, airbrushes, which are you know, designed for sort of professional artists with the compressors. They're, they all work to some degree, um, and over the years I've tried a few of them, um, and my preference is to go for the cheapest, but I found that uh, the cheapest one way is to mix our own. So you get the, the large tubs and you mix, you, you know, predominantly the colour I use the most is grey, so I get a big white and a big black and mix them together. The Bugatti aeroplane I did, I tried a variety of these blues. Um, this is the one I started with, which was the, just the cheapest one. And I found that it didn't have any pigment in it or very little pigment in it. So when I painted it onto a death one, you could see the white coming through quite quickly. Uh, after about three coats of this stuff, I realized that I was getting nowhere with it. Uh, I tried this brand and this just had a, a similar effect. Uh, it was okay, but it, again, didn't have enough of the coverage. So I went and bought this one, which is a Winsor & Newton sort of artistic one with lots of, it says highly pigmented. And I tried that and that was fantastic. So I, I think if you're gonna put a strong colors on, uh, which are not, you know, you know, like bright reds and bright, bright colors, then you can't fault these because they've got a high pigment count, uh, which means that, uh, you know, it goes on a lot easier and it's a lot more vivid. Um, so, quality of acrylic paint varies um, from from brand to brand. So this is just a dry brush. I'm just going to spread that on. Spread this one. This one has been uh, probably left too long now. 
that it's it's all gone hard. It's just it's ruined. Oh dear. Wipe some off my brush, and then this one is the is the blue. sort of chalk and cheese really. I mean the one in the middle is obviously past its uh, best but um, it's it doesn't it's not great um, so the better the quality of paint uh, the better the better the result and it also covers so much better. Let me just look see that it's getting very thin very quickly in that one. Similar size dollop has a lot better coverage. So let's do some experimentation on these, uh, on, on a few of these things to see how we get on. We're going to give this uh, RC Styro silver a go. What's that one? We're going to give the Hobby Acrylic uh, go. This is a white one, so it's going to be very bright. See what happens. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Thick coat. Okay, the next one is Hobbycraft Acrylic Spray Paint. And uh, this is a uh, silver. Bit of a heavy coat there again, so we're, we're, con we're consistent. And now we're going to give this plastic coat a, uh, a whirl and see what happens with this one. Oops, it's blown the other one upside down. Oh dear, too close. Let's see how they all dry. This one has got a strange sheen to it, but uh, let's see how it goes. That's uh, this is caused due to it falling over. Uh, you can just see the the other the other bit where it's fallen over. But uh, we'll see if it eats into the foam. Let's we'll see how all of these these work. We'll come back when they've all a chance to fully dry. Okay, they've had tons to dry now, and if you look, the quality of the RC Styro is good. There's no, uh, there's, there's no degradation of the Depron. It's got a nice sparkle to it. The white painted uh, Hobby Acrylic, uh, very nice, neat coat. Very impressed with that. The uh, Hobby Craft Acrylic Spray Paint has completely chewed up the acrylic, uh, chewed up the Depron. Um, so you can see how it's just eaten into that horrid and the plastic coat again it's just uh, a horrible a horrible surface it's eaten quite aggressively into the foam this experiment goes to show that not all acrylic spray paint is equal both Tamiya and Revel make uh, acrylics. Uh, this is the Revel Aqua Colour, and as you see, um, this piece of Depron here, I'll just paint it, the blob one. It goes on very smoothly, very good quality, and it's exactly the right colour. And this is where the 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 benefit of using a pre-mixed, pre-coloured. Uh, paint comes from Whenever you come to paint your plane you can simply look for this, the painting guide for either a Revel or Tamiya kit and order the relevant paints um, and uh, You know you've got the exact color whereas if you mix your own color you have a chance of getting it wrong Which I've done on a, more than one occasion 
The drawback to, to these is that there's not much paint in the pots. Um, it doesn't go a long way, especially if you are, if you're, if you've got a large model and you've got a large area to paint. Um, so you see again, top quality paint, good coverage. It's a nice consistency, and uh, no reaction to the Depon at all. It uh, sits on, on Depon really nicely. And both the Tamiya and Rebel, they they work really nicely with uh, Depron. The colours are spot on, the consistency is perfect for brushing, and you can get thinners uh, that will thin them down for airbrushing. Uh, it's not overly expensive, so it's uh, it's possible that you could you know maybe buy two or three little pots for, for your plane that you're painting if you need to. Alternatively, if you don't want to buy lots of Tamiya or, or similar paints, then you can mix your own. Well, you need a, a container to put your paint mix in, and I tend to like to use these, uh, which are recycled mayonnaise, you know, ketchup type bottles. And you rinse and wash them out thoroughly, and they they actually keep an airtight seal, and uh, the paint lasts a long time in them. You can make a large amount, and of course, if you crash your plane, uh, you've already got the paint you need to repaint. You can use glass jars, but I find that the acrylic paint actually acts as a glue between the uh, lid and the glass jar. So after a while, they become completely seized, and they're almost impossible to open. So if we go to, for example, we're going to have a go at replicating this paint here, which is a metallic grey. So I'm going to get some silver, and I'm just going to, going to squeeze a bit of silver into the pot. Then I'm going to, it's going to be thin down a little bit, so I'm going to need to add some water. And I'm going to need to add a little bit of black to get the dark grey. Not much. And we add a little bit of white too. Because that will add kind of grey texture to it. So add a dollop of white in there. And then the, the other thing that I like to do is add this stuff. Uh, and this helps it, especially with, the, uh, with an airbrush. Uh, because it helps to break the surface tension goes on a lot smoother. Um, so I'm going to have a few squirts of that in there. And let's put the lid on. Anyway, so I'm not unduly worried about it being a little thin at the moment. So let's just see what sort of colour we're getting by comparison. So you can see that we're not a million miles away. I mean, that's still wet and shiny, but uh, we're getting close. I would say a little bit more black in there. Before I go any further, I'm just going to give it a, a mix up with a brush. With just a few colours, you can mix a whole range of colours. Uh, this is like a skin tone, like an olive, dark olive drab, and an acid green. Uh, didn't take long at all. This was a bit of yellow, uh, a bit of green, white, 
this was black and green and this was a bit of orange a bit of red and lots of white and a bit of brown and you can mix more or less any color you want and these these mixing pots are air solids so there's ways to keep the costs right down in this hobby if you need to When setting about painting a plane with acrylics and using brushes, uh, it makes sense to have a few different size brushes. Um, always go for a, a good soft artist brush, something like this, which I, I used earlier for uh, painting the polyurethane varnish on. It's important to get the consistency of the paint just right. And when, when I say just right, it's, it's about having, when we put it onto the Depron, if it's too thick, it, it, uh, it will be um, dry at, these edge, at the edges like this and if it's too thin it will be too watery. Um, this isn't too bad actually, this is a rebel pot and it's straight out and, and you tend to work it until none of the, uh, the brush lines are, are very visible. And what will happen as you as you leave it, if the paint does its job, it will settle back and leave the ridges um, that might be apparent. If I just lean that against there for a second, see if I can show you in the light. Um, there's very very little brush. You can just make out the brush lines in there, but hopefully when it, when uh, when the paint dries, they won't be visible at all. If it's too thick, you might have a problem with that. And if it's too thin, you might end up seeing the Depron shining through. So the technique, again, is when you apply it, um, sort of, I tend to put a dollop on my brush, like this, in, in the middle of the area I want to paint. And I spread it out and make it sort of um, go into uh, as e evenly distributed as I can and you paint it in a crisscross fashion. So you build it up um, until it's nice and nice and thinly applied. So you don't add extra weight for no reason. I mean, the majority of acrylic is water anyway, so when it, by the time it's dried, it, it won't be adding, adding much weight. So, one direction, second direction. Keep working it until it's, you know, it's, a, it's, it's quite thin. There's very little brush marks in there. And when that dries, that should be very nice. There are other places to look for paints. This uh, pot of gold, I found this to be a really good paint. And uh, of course you can mix gold with, with greys and things to give some really nice sort of uh, exotic metal surfaces. Um, and um, it goes on really well and it's water based. I don't know what it is, it's, it's designed for household uh, interiors. So you get a lot of it for your money. And it goes on really, really nicely. And you have a similar sort of quality to those expensive sort of, or the, those Tamiya paints that we're looking at. So same sort of technique. So side to side. And this actual this um, technique is also used in um, aerosol when you spray with uh, large areas with um, spray spray tins. This is one of the best ways to get an even even distribution. The larger the brush, the less brush marks you're going to have. So this is a smaller brush than I was using earlier. Um, so I'm having to work it more. But um, I'm not going to overwork it because if it starts starting to dry, which is quite hot here at the moment, um, then what will happen, these ridges uh, from the, the brush marks will start to set as they are. What I want them to do is to relax down uh, and sort of all sort of fill out and and um, disappear. So uh, as you can see, there is some, some stripes in there. 
Um, and I'm hoping now that if I leave this, it will uh, it will dissipate. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see what happens. Metallics are always harder. Now that the brushed paint has had a chance to dry, you can see that the quality is this you can barely see any brush marks at all. Just the grain of the Depron showing through on both on both of them. And the gold, a little bit of brush stroking coming through. It might have been contaminant, it might not have been mixed that well. It's not too bad. Um, it's not great. But uh, this grey, as you can see, that it's possible to achieve a really good, a good finish just with brushes. Okay, so looking at airbrushing equipment, there are lots of different models of airbrushes on the market. Um, this is one I had a long time ago. So it's got a very fine, fine nib on it, and it's only really much use for inks or you know translucent inks that are non-opaque so if you if you spray uh, a blue you'll see the color behind it so if you spray a newspaper the newspaper will go blue but you'll still be able to read it um, so for the sake of aero modeling this is not much use at all um, if you look at a variety of cheap ones on the market this is a what they call a badger it's written on the side here badger and uh, it comes with um, these airbrush propellant and they're, they're really simple and they work really nicely. Uh, the way it works is you have a, a glass uh, vase at the bottom, a, a, a vial or whatever you want to call it, a jar, and this bit on screws and you put your, your paint mix in there and the, the air when it runs through the here, and this is the button that operates it, when it runs through that nozzle, this on this one here uh, is adjustable. This is the needle that you adjust. So if you turn it one way, you'll get more paint coming out. If you turn it the other way, it'll be a finer mist. So you have to sort of do a few sort of test prints first. So let's see what happens. Oops. So you get a nice even coating. Uh, the big risk with hairbrushing is you might, if I put lots on here, you might spot it. You might start getting dribbles in it. Actually, that's not a dribble, that's just a ding on the, on the scrap bit of Depron I have underneath. But you can see the cover, it covers really well, very even, and uh, you can, you can let, me, let me put a, a finer setting on, on this nozzle. Uh, if I remember which way it is, I think it's this way. Let's see what it does now, see if it helps. So it's too fine, it's nothing's coming through. So it takes a bit of uh, adjustment, but a little bit that way. And you can see, so, oops, see if you made any difference. A little bit. Now we've got a very fine mist coming through now. Yeah, you see, so if you put it on too thickly, you can see what the problem is here. So uh, it's, it's too thick and it's running. So it's, it's learning the, the amount to put on, the thickness. It's better to build an airbrush up in thin, thin layers uh, on, you know, multiple layers. So gentle covering like this, wait till it dries, and then you sort of hit it again. Build it up. You see, it covers really nicely and really evenly. The drawback to airbrushes is the mess that they make. As you can see, there's a lot of overspray. So you have to cover everything in uh, newspaper and use a lot of masking uh, in order to make sure you contain it. And also breathe 
uh, using dust masks and air breathing equipment, which will help to stop you breathing particulates, even if it is only acrylic. Often you need to have some really crisp edges with airbrushing. That's where masking tape comes in. Often uh, masking tape and newspaper is all that is required um, to give your plane some really cool paint scheme. Or a quicker and often more effective way to get such amazing camo schemes is using masking film, sometimes called frisk. If you want a softer edge, use rolled up plasticine at the edges of your mask to get that softer effect. The information in this guide is not exhaustive by any means, it is really just an introduction. I'll go into more details in other videos later in the series. Thanks for watching.